in prayer the consciousness I must have is the consciousness of the father the consciousness of the father so in teaching prayer there was an emphasis on God's personality now an emphasis on God's personality now his personality now is that of a father one who imparts life to us that is where we came from he imparts life to us and because we now have this life we are in fellowship with him Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 and 15 I like the way brother Paul applied it there Ephesians 3 14 and 15 put it up for me Ephesians chapter 3 verse number 14 and verse number 15 <clears throat> for this cause I bow my knees unto the father of our Lord Jesus Christ next verse of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named the whole family he calls it a family and it's not a covenant relationship you and God are not in a covenant headlines you and God are not in a covenant <laughs> tag them tag them quickly you and God are not in a covenant we are in a family <laughs> I was preaching where was I preaching <laughs> One government official came from government house. Before he came, he said they warned him that that man, if you sit under him, you will be convinced. So the man said, no, I will not come to the program. I will not come. They say that man, he teaches things that are not correct. But if you sit under him, you will be convinced. I will not come. A government official. Then somebody now told him, but you need to listen to that man. Don't just hear what people are saying. Go and listen to him. But in order for you not to be convinced, go the first day. Because usually on the first day, he just takes time to lay foundation. Don't go the second day. It is that second day that is bloody. <laughs> Something happened. He couldn't come the first day. He now landed the second day. <laughs> and he sat by the pulpit directly in front of me I began to open scriptures wah, 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 wah after a while I saw him doing like this <laughs> after the service they came and said I want to buy all the books I want all the materials they told me, now I have seen it is true I am convinced, I want everything you have done <laughs> oh my goodness oh my goodness I tell you man I don't know why people fear me like that. <clears throat> I'm not Boko Haram, please tell you. <laughs> All right, so you are not in a covenant relationship with God. Our relationship is as a result of an existing covenant between God and God. Our relationship is as a result of an existing covenant between God and God. Please, that's very important. And that covenant between God and God has been fulfilled. I teach it like this. That the new covenant is a promise made in the old covenant and fulfilled by the death of Jesus Christ. The new covenant is a promise made in the old covenant and fulfilled by the death of Jesus Christ. Now, in fulfilling the new covenant that God gave before the old, the old became obsolete. Look at Matthew 26, 28. Matthew chapter 26, verse number 28 quickly. Matthew 26, 28. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. My blood of the New Testament, which is shed. So until the blood was shed, there was no New Testament. Look at Hebrews chapter 8 verse 13. Hebrews chapter 8 verse number 13. In that he saith, 
a new covenant. He had made the first old. Now, that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. That means the arrival of the New Testament fulfilled the demands of the Old Testament and took it out of the way. Galatians chapter 3 verse 17 to 19 please I beg you pay attention so that when they are misquoting me you can put them right with doctrinal explanation and this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ there was a covenant confirmed before before of God in Christ the law which was 430 years after so there was a covenant before the law and that covenant before the law was confirmed in Christ so Christ predated the law Jesus the same today the only person that has that description is God yesterday today forever the same God so Jesus is God Jesus is God the same yesterday today forever that's divinity so Jesus is God Almighty just by that scripture Hebrews 13 8 the same yesterday today forever he changed not it's only deity that has that description nobody no human being is the same yesterday today and forever only God and Jesus is the same yesterday so Jesus is God Almighty. Are we following here? So the covenant, put it up for me brother, the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul, that it should make the promise of non-effect. What he's saying here is that the New Testament predated the Old Testament. So there was New Testament, the Old Testament interrupted the New Testament, Jesus died to reinforce the New Testament that began before the Old Testament. How many of you understood what I just said now? So there was New Testament before Old Testament. Old Testament was not God's plan. Old Testament was God's permission because of the state of man. God's permission because of the state of man. Moses because of the hardness of your heart gave you the law that was not the plan from the beginning are we teaching good here okay so the new testament was before the old testament which jesus enforced in his death burial and resurrection so we don't have a covenant with god for lack of a better word you and your father don't have a covenant you don't have a covenant with your father your father and mother have a relationship you are just the outcome of that relationship so god and god in christ have a covenant and because of the union between god and christ we came out we are born of that union so because we are born of that union we are beneficiaries of that union so because we are beneficiaries of that union he's committed to take care of us so you and God can't be looking at terms. You do, I do. I don't do. Divinity cannot be in covenant with humanity. It's injustice. God that cannot fail cannot be in covenant with man that fails all the time. That is injustice. So God decided to become a man so that God in man can represent man and God in God can represent God. So God and God enter the covenant on behalf of man. So even when you fail, the covenant is still standing because it's not predicated on you, it's predicated on divinity. For by two immutable things in which it was in possible for God to lie am I communicating at all so what we are dealing with here is a father and his family we are not just his people we are not just his people in terms of we have a tribe of the house of God 
we are not just a people we are actually his family father father abba father yeah what does that utterance do it affirms my union with god whenever i say father my union with god is affirmed it's not god that need the utterance he has already given you his spirit you didn't make him your father he made you his son you didn't make god your father it is he that made you his son so in the father consciousness of prayer it affirms our authority in asking and demanding so if i were you i will use this terminology more when i am praying prayer therefore kabayada are you ready for this are you ready for this prayer therefore is taking my place in christ prayer is taking my place in christ over life circumstances and situation taking my place in christ over life's circumstances and situations i am taking my place in christ so in the place of prayer when i say father I am taking my place in Christ. The moment I want to pray and I say, Father, I just occupied my position that me and the Father, we have an unbroken fellowship. That I have his ears guaranteed to hear my voice. Father, Abba, the consciousness is that I cannot be denied. I am affirming who I am in Christ righteousness that's the nature god imparted into the human spirit that makes you stand before god without fear without sin consciousness or inferiority complex i repeat that right righteousness is the nature of god imparted into the human spirit that makes you stand before god without fear without sin consciousness or inferiority complex righteousness also is the nature of god imparted into our human spirit that makes us stand before the devil and makes us stand before men righteousness is god's nature imparted into our human spirit that makes us stand before the devil and makes us stand before men it's not God that needs your righteousness consciousness. It's you that needs that consciousness. The accuser of the brethren is the devil. That means prayer is about who you are in Christ. Prayer is about what you have in Christ. Who you are in Christ. What you have in Christ. That's what prayer is. Prayer is about who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ. That's prayer. Taking your place in Christ. It's just like praying in tongues. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 2. Look at the way brother Paul puts it. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God. For no man understandeth him. How be it? In the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. When he utters tongues, tongues comes out in the natural. But in the spirit, he is speaking mysteries. So when I go, You are hearing what does not make sense. But in the spirit, what I am saying has serious sense. I'm speaking mysteries. In the natural is tongues in the spirit is mysteries how be it in the spirit which means how do you get in the spirit speaking tongues when i start speaking in tongues i am in the spirit how be it in the spirit he is speaking mysteries In verse 4, it says, He that speaks in tongues edifies himself. So look at the multidimensional thing that comes out of tongues. Number one, I am in a discussion with God when I speak in tongues. 
I am in a discussion with God. The moment I start speaking in tongues, I have left the realm of men. I'm in the realm of God. Okay? Number two, I'm edifying myself in verse four. Number one, I'm in a discussion with God. Number two, I'm edifying myself. The word edify means to build. But the real thing is that I am praying. So, I am also making something happen. Look at verse 14 of 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians 14, 14. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. My spirit prayeth. My spirit prayeth. Look at verse 15 and 16. <clears throat> Verse 15 and 16 of 1 Corinthians 14. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. Somebody say, I will. Say it again. Say it one more time. Say it louder. I will. So it's not the spirit that will make me pray in tongues. I, it is a decision of my will. I will. So anytime I want to pray in tongues, I pray. I don't have to be moved by the Spirit. The Spirit doesn't have to move me. I will pray in the Spirit. I will pray with my understanding. I will sing in the Spirit. I will sing with my understanding. It's, it's, it's the decision of my will. Something doesn't have to follow me. Something doesn't have to knock my head and I go, bah, 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 bah. no. I will. Just like if I want to speak Ibibio now, I will speak. And if I want to continue in English, I will. I did that by my will. And I came back to English by my will. Just like now, Mangrondongra Dagasakaya, by my will. I will. Are we teaching here? And when I do, my spirit prayed. When I do, mysteries to God. When I speak in tongues, I build myself. Multi-dimensional benefits. So, <clears throat> that is where we have supplication. The word prayer, I will pray. Philippians 4 6. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. Prayer, supplication with thanksgiving. Look at 1 Thessalonians 5 17. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Then, next verse. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Not for everything, but in everything. Are you here? Now, look at 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions. I took care of that, right? intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men so it's part of supplication to give thanks so look at the role you play number one I am enjoying fellowship with the father because I'm speaking to God and not to men so I'm enjoying fellowship with the father Number two, I am edified. I am edified. Then number three, I am actually getting something done. There are three dimensional things that prayer does in the believer. Number one, I am enjoying fellowship with the Father. I'm speaking to God and not to man. I'm speaking mysteries. Number two, I am edified. Number three, I'm actually getting something done three-dimensional benefits look at Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 Ephesians 6 18 pay attention praying always with all prayer and supplication where in the spirit 
with all prayer so all prayer and supplication should be done where in the spirit what how do you pray and supplicate i must make deposit sometimes what i do i abel damina sometimes what i do is i take scriptures i sit before the word of god i read i study i meditate the word i meditate the word i meditate the word i meditate the word on a particular issue i meditate the word until the fire of that word saturates my heart then i begin to pray so it's not flippant prayer it is heartfelt you took it in and thought about it before you brought it out it has to come from inside not from here from here heartfelt and how do you produce heartfelt prayers it is from what comes out of the heart how do things come out of the heart it is from what you put in you put it in to think it through to produce it out in another form it went in as the world it came out as the sword of the spirit it went in as the word but when it is coming out because it has been processed by meditation and it has come by revelation it's not coming out as the sword of the spirit in the book of psalm 39 verse 3 look at the way david said it i like the way david put it here 33 verse 9 psalms my heart was hot within me while i was musing the fire burned then speak i with my tongue my heart was hot how do i get to where my heart will catch fire my heart is indicting a good matter as touching the king when i am thinking on the provisions of redemption all that jesus has provided when i am saturated with the reality of it my heart is aglow then i speak with my mouth so it's not just like uh, man of god please uh, i have a problem i want you to pray about what's the problem i want this take it it goes beyond that in supplication it's not a take it matter you take the matter and you sit down with it you sit down with it and then you begin to indict a good matter my tongue is the pen of a ready writer so you are pondering you are meditating you are pondering and the reality of the provisions of god come alive your heart is on fire then you open your mouth that kind of prayer is coming with weights from inside with weight from inside mama knows that sometimes we'll just have an issue to pray i'll tell her let me think about it let me think about it. the thinking about it is not whether it will happen or not i am collating meditation materials to set my heart on fire so the prayer coming out of my mouth is fireful my heart was hot within me when did it get hot while i was musing what does it mean to muse to ponder what does it mean to ponder to muter what does it mean to muter to roll over you take scriptures and begin to roll them over in your heart you begin to ponder them until they catch fire then once they catch fire a guy on that tala, you're coming from that height of insight am i teaching here then speak i with my tongue that's why sometimes in prayer you just kneel down quiet for hours one two hours you're quiet you're saying nothing they told jesus lazarus whom you love is dead bible say he sat down in one place for two days he did he just sat there pondering and meditating to find out what god wants in this situation after a while he said let's go and wake him up he's sleeping I have cleared the matter. He's sleeping. Huh? They say if he's sleeping, he will wake up. He said, no, he's dead. Since you don't understand spiritual language, let's give you carnal language. Let's go. Immediately arrived. They say, if you are here, my brother wouldn't have died. I am the resurrection and the life. I'm coming from the point of divinity. If he were dead, he will live again. Roll away the stone. Then he groaned. 
Then he groaned. And when they got there, he said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. So while he was groaning and coming, he sorted the matter. When he arrived there, the matter was already sorted. Lazarus, come for... He didn't go there to the Hinga Mana. No, no, he has done Hinga Mana on the road. Now, when you finish Hinga Mana, you can now issue decrees. Comfort. Let that be. But you have already finished cooking the matter. I'm, I'm teaching good this morning. You've been pondering. You've been meditating. My heart was hot within me. While I was musing, the fire burned. Then what happened? Speak I with my tongue. God showed me that scripture 1984. That's Psalm 39. Uh, that scripture opened me up to prayer from 1984. Psalm 39, verse 3. I know I've known that scripture. My heart was hot while I was musing, meditating, pondering on the riches of, of redemption, on the provisions of Calvary. Then the fire burned. And I said, no, Satan, this cannot be like this. That's what happened when Jesus saw that woman bent. He said, ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, be loosed on the Sabbath day, lose her and let her go. Boom, the woman was loose because he came out of fire. The fire there is not destructive fire. The fire there is passion. The fire there is the, the zeal of God burning on your inside. I'm teaching good here. Sabolata, Sabolata, Zibo Bobolatash, Haratanakata. For instance, if I feed, if I feed, if I feed on the things that are taught in my church, if I feed on them, it will produce my prayer life. So if the emphasis of a church is money, 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 you will make it material blessing. Okay? If that's the emphasis, the prayer life of the members will be about money, money, money. What you feed on will condition your prayer life. If you feed on Christ and his mission on earth, your prayer will be focused on the advancement of his kingdom. It's what you feed on. Huh? It's what you feed on. What you feed on will frame your prayer life. What you feed on will frame your prayer life. If I go to church where people are not taught to love, all the emphasis is fall and die. Judgment. Be roasted. Be roasted. Be roasted. Touch me by mistake. Die by correction. If I be a man of God. <laughs> Dr. Damina said, it was not God that answered the prayer of Elijah. Yes, it was not. I repeat, it was not. The problem is many Nigerians who are Christians do not have faith in Jesus. They do not believe that Jesus is God. They see Jesus as the same with Elijah and Moses. So Elijah, if he says something, Jesus cannot correct it because they are age mates. Many Nigerians do not understand that Jesus is the Lord and Savior of Elijah and Moses. Jesus is the reason for Moses. Jesus is the reason for Elijah. Elijah and Moses came to announce Jesus. So that's why when Jesus shows up, he starts correcting Moses. The big boy is Moses. In Matthew chapter 5, you have her. Moses said, I for I, tooth for tooth. I his master, I say, Bless those that curse you. Pray for those that despitefully use you. That you may be like your father which is in heaven. Why? Jesus said no one has ever seen the father. So Moses and Elijah never saw God. Which means their statements will be subject to correction when God shows up. Jesus is not junior God. Jesus is not God's errand boy. Jesus is not God's boy. Jesus is God Almighty who became a man to die for man. He is the beginning, is the end. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And the government shall be upon where? His shoulder to order and to establish. So it is the coming of Jesus that will order and establish the kingdom of God. Sit down, let me push this thing. 
2 Kings chapter 1. I know you've been waiting for this. 2 Kings chapter 1, because you are teaching prayer. 2 Kings chapter 1, verse 9. Put it up quickly. But Moses said God repented. It repented God that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. This is Moses. Judges 2.18. Judges 2.18. And when the Lord raised them up, judges, then the, Lord, then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For it repented the Lord. So three times they say God repented. But we know that God does not repent. Genesis, Exodus 16, 4. Another case. Then I'll show you why. Exodus 16, 4. In fact, I want everybody to read Exodus 16, 4 in this church. Very loud, want to go. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from where? Who told Moses? Who told Moses? I will rain what? Bread from where? For you. And the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day. That I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or not. So Moses said God told him. That he will rain bread from where? Heaven. Who said it? Eh? John 6.30 John 6.30 then said they therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What, do, what, what dost thou walk? 31. Everybody. We're going to read 31 and 32 like a mass choir. This is Jesus now speaking. One to go. Our fathers did eat manna where? In the desert. As it is written, he gave them what? Bread from heaven to eat. Who said that? Moses. Next verse. Then everybody want to go. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven. Someone's telling, somebody's writing on my Facebook. See it, see it, see it. The fire came down, see it. See it. Moses gave you not that bread from heaven. See it. If we're going to do see it, me. These people that are talking, they never read Bible page to page before. Me, I have been reading it for 40 years now. You carry CRK. Anyway, for whatever is what, you know, in the last one week, everybody has studied Bible in Nigeria. You know, I have sent everybody to Bible study. Even people that never read Bible for one year, they carry their Bible and clean it. This thing is said, make we open up. At least then they read Bible. <laughs> Why will Moses say, God said he will bring bread down. And Jesus will say, no bread came from heaven. Why will Elijah say, if I be a man of God, let fire come down? Jesus will say, no, that fire is not from my spirit. My, my, I didn't come to destroy human beings. I came to save. Because in the Old Testament, nobody saw God. Nobody knew, knew God. The coming of Jesus was the first arrival of God. So the Old Testament people spoke prophecy and they also spoke their opinions. Let me give you another opinion of Moses. Exodus 4.24 Moses' opinion. Exodus 4.24 I'm helping somebody, right? Let's read together. Exodus 4.24 One, two, go. And it came to pass by the way in the inn that the Lord met him God want to kill Moses. God doesn't know how to kill Moses. So God is looking for how to kill him. 
Is that God? If God wants to kill you while he's thinking you have died. While he's still thinking you have died. You will die without even knowing that he was thinking it. So this is Moses' assumption. Let me show you another assumption. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Let's settle this matter. How many of you know that Moses was not there when all of Genesis happened? He was born in Exodus chapter 2. So Genesis has finished before Moses came up. So for him to write what happened will be what people told him and what he gathered by way of material put together and the things he received from God and the things he assumed. That's why you must rightly Genesis 18. Let me give you another one of Moses' assumption. 1821. I want everybody to read. Genesis 1821. Let's go. One to go. I will go down and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it, which is common to me. And if not, I will know. God doesn't know whether Sodom and Gomorrah will hear him. He has to come down and come and see. God who sees the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end does he know whether Sodom will hear until he comes down so God is like a man he doesn't know until he comes there but there's another Moses' assumption why is he like that Hebrews 1.1 1, 1 amplified Hebrews 1.1 1, 1 amplified AMPC Hebrews 1.1 1, 1. In many separate revelations each of which set forth a portion of the truth in different ways God spoke of old to our forefathers in and by the prophets separate revelation so in the writings of Moses there is only a portion of truth in the writings of Elijah there is only a portion of the truth. Jesus is the totality of the truth. So what they had is what we call progressive revelation. So because their revelation was progressing, you will see their nuances, you will see their confusions, you will see their culture, you will see their assumptions and you will see the word of God in the midst. So now in teaching, you divide. So the New Testament explains the Old Testament. Is it clear? Is it clear? Why did I take you through this journey? So that you can help people. In the second service, we deal with Ark of Noah. Dr. Damina said God did not have Moses to Jonah to build an ark. Yes. I said exactly that. God never asked Noah to build an ark. Stand up, let's go. <laughs> Wait, oh, stand up. A student of Monef, eh? a student of Monef, decided to branch kings and queens to attend lecture for 30 minutes. In Monef, he's in class 2. Then he entered kings and queens, class 5. You think he will understand? So that's what is happening to these people. They are members of another church. Then from time to time, they branch higher class. <laughs> they branch which kind of class? Higher class. Then they will just hear something. Yeah. Without understanding. <laughs> Moreover, how many of you know? 
that everything anybody says is in a context every time you're talking you're talking in a context the word this morning equipped and powered and we rejoice we take our place in revelation knowledge and we take our place in Christ I decree that through the course of this week everyone under the sound of my voice you enjoy answers prayers answered prayers